Shila Swarup Damodar Roy Ramanandari Gauda Parsana Vrinda Ki Jai Namachari Shila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Prem Sikho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sari Gauda Bhakta Shri Navadvi Dhamma Ki Jai Shri Vrindavan Dhamma Ki Jai Shri Shri Krishna Gopa Gopi Gopa Varasavana the Dharma key. <coughs> Shyama Kunda Radha Kunda Yamuna Ganga Tulsi Bhakti Devi key. Shri Radha Govinda Radha Gopinath Radha Madame Mohan Jiva key. Yeah. Shri Shri Radha Gokulananda Radha Shyama Sunda Radha Ramanda Radha Damodara Jiva key. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Shri Mati Adi Asta. Shri Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, Adi Manjari, Brinda Kijai, yeah. Shimati Brinda Devi Kijai, yeah. Shimati Paranamasi Yoga Parana, Shri Gopi Swar Mahadev Kijai, yeah. Sarva Bhishta Pradata Giraj Govardhan Maharaja Kijai, yeah. Grantra Shimad Bhagavatam Kijai, yeah. <coughs> Grantra Shri Chaitanya Charitamritam Kijai, yeah. Jai Shri uh, Vishva Vaishnavarad Sabha Ki Jai yeah. Jai Shri Jagannatha Baladev Subhadra Sudarshan Chakra Jiu Ki Jai yeah. Jai Bhakti Vigna Vinashana Srina Sringa Dev Ki Jai yeah. Bhakta Prabhu Shri Pralai Maharaj Ki Jai yeah. Charadam Chara Sampradaya Chara Acharya Ki Jai yeah. Ramatraj Shri Chaitanya Mat Ki Jai yeah. Aurangani Ananta Koti Vaishnav Rinda Ki Jai, yeah. Tri Bhuvana Pavana Harinam Samkirtana Ki Jai, yeah. Tri Bhuvana Mangala Harinam Prabhu Ki Jai, Hare Krishna Mahamantra Ki Jai, Sachinandana Gaura Hari Ki Jai, Srinityananda Mahajana Ki Jai, Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai, Samakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Samakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Jai Shri Nitai Thank you. 
Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Jnana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Mukam Karoti Vangam Langa Yate Gide Yat Kripa Tamaham Bande Shri Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Gyevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Onamaha Namo Mahabhadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaura Trishe Namaha He Krishna Karana Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatipate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanjana Gaurangi Radhe Maneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vrindai Tulsi Devai Priyai Keshavasyacha Krishna Bhakti Prade Chavachai Namo Namah Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupa Kam Bhakta Avataram Bhakta Kyam Kam <coughs> Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And first of all, I'm offering my unlimited Dandavat Pranams. And my Shraddha Bhushpanjali to the lotus feet of my most beloved worshipable Guru Dev Nityalila Pravishta, Om Vishnu Pada Paramahansa Asto Tarasata Sri Srila Esi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Sri Prabhupada. Then I'm offering my same unlimited Dandavat pranams and my Shraddha Bhushpanjali to the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Siksha Guru Devs. Nitya Lila Pravishtom Vishnu Pada Paramahansa Stutarasata Sri Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sri Dhar Goswami Maharaj and Nitya Lila Paramahansa Sri Srila Bhakti Goswami Maharaj My Dandha the Lotus Sri Rupa Yoga Guru Varga Pronounce to all the Vaishnavas and all the Vaishnavas. So yesterday we completed the topic that we were discussing for and that was the introduction to Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj's publication of the Vain chapter 21. And in that discussion, we kind of because we had discussed that on the before yesterday, and then yesterday we completed the discussion. And the topic was an in-depth analysis of the Siddhanta. What is the Siddhanta of our Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas in the line of Srila Rupa Goswami regarding the subject matter of hearing the pastimes of Bhagavan Swayam Sri Krishna, uh, which is de depicted and described in detail in the Srimad Bhagavatam 10th Canto, and particularly his pastimes with the Brajagopis of Vrindavan. 
Srila Gurudev addressed a particular topic of who is qualified to hear these transcendental pastimes of the Krishna. And have a certain opinion about hearing those pastimes without first of all having purified the anartas within the heart. That one has to, they, they uh, <clears throat> put forward their opinion. That one has to first of all be from their uh, anartas within the heart and material desires. Which are the Ras Lila as uh, Rid Roga. Rid Roga, the disease in the form of Kam, Krod, Lobha, Moha, Madha, Matsarya. Kam means material lusty desires to enjoy sense gratification. Kroda, anger. Kam, Krod, Lobha, greed. Uh, Madha, intoxication. Mm. Moha, illusion, matsarya, envy. So these contaminations are in the hearts of the conditioned souls. That's why they're here in the material world. I've come here to try to have a separate existence from their eternal constitutional position of serving the God and Sri Krishna. So they've come here into this world, and therefore, Maya Devi, Krishna's external energy, has covered the conditioned soul with two types of bodies made of material elements. The gross material body, uh, made of earth, water, fire, air, ether, that is this physical body, which we change lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. Clothing. Then there is the changing, it is the same subtle body made of mana, buddhi, ahankar, of mind, intelligence, and false ego. So these two into the conditioned souls to enable them to exercise their free will, because Krishna never takes away the free will of the living entity. If Krishna were to take away the free will of the living entity, there would be no possibility of the living Krishna pain, transcendental love, there would be no possibility. Why? Because love is given freely from one's own desire, from one's own initiative. It is the purest sense that any living being can experience is love <clears throat> and love is selfless in the transcendental realm you know, it is completely free and devoid of any personal uh, aggrandizement any personal desire to enjoy one's own senses separately from Krishna so that great science of transcendental loving devotion, bhakti, and the effect of bhakti. When one engages in pure bhakti, then that what is attained is the experience, the astonishing experience, the rasa, tasting the divine ecstatic exchanges with Krishna. This topic was taught directly by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to his dear most servitor, Srila Rupa Goswami, who actually fulfilled Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's desire. You know, we have one pranam mantra for Rupa Goswami mm -hmm. that we say for glorifying and offering our obeisances to Rupa Goswami. This pranam mantra was written by Ram Das Thakur. 
So what is that mantra? Anyone here knows? But anyone here knows? Yes? From the meeting? How did he fulfill? By writing the scripture. Stop Yena Butale. Stop means to establish, and Yena Butale means within this world. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam. What was the internal heart's desire of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Why did he descend into this world? What did he want to fulfill? Huh? What did he what did he want to give to the in this world? So that internal mana abhishta. That internal heart's desire of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was fulfilled by Guru. That's why Naratam Das Thakur has written this Pranam Mantra to declare that fact. Sri Chaitanya Manubhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale. By whom his internal heart's desire was fulfilled by his establishing within this world his mission. Hmm? Svayam rupa kada mahyam tatati sva padanti kam. What does that mean? Svayam rupa kada mahyam. When will that rupa Goswami uh, bestow upon me his mercy? Kada uh, mahyam tatati sva padanti kam. And give me the shelter of his lotus feet. This is the mission uh, of the Acharyas who are following Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And topmost in our line, uh, Rupa Goswami, who has that specific quality recognized and acknowledged by all. That he is the one that very specifically fulfilled the inner heart's desire of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Can we say that Sanatana Goswami, the other six Goswamis, did they also fulfill Mahaprabhu's inner heart's desire? Huh? What about them? Did they not write literatures? Did Sanatana Goswami not write? The first book written by any of the Goswamis. Did they not also establish temples? Not also... Uh, identify the lost places of Sri Krishna's pastimes in Braj. They were sent to Braj. They followed Mahaprabhu's order. But then why is Srila Rupa Goswami being singled out as having fulfilled Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Mahavishnu? Can anyone say here why? Is it because Fulfilled it and they all partially fulfilled yeah, it. Yeah, but that doesn't say anything. You have to say how. How did he fully fulfill it and how did they not fully fulfill it, you know? We should know these things. The specific contribution made by Srila Rupa Goswami, there's a nice little book that Srila Gurudev gave to us. The specific contribution of Rupa Goswami. And if you read that book, then you can understand elaborately what is the speciality of Rupa Goswami. Why, why is that important for us? Why is it important for us? Understand. We have to find out. We have to find out. Then, yeah. if we know what well, was Rupa Goswami's mind, I mean, Rupa Goswami's mind of this. Right. So, if Rupa Goswami knew his, so <coughs> similar, we have similar things to do. 
that's not good enough. It's that okay, now I know. So I'm very <laughs> rusty trying to explain so many years ago. Uh, so I am bringing it back. Thank you. This is why, because everybody needs to vitalizing their understanding, at least for the very gaining the proper Siddhantic understanding. That's why these books have been given to us. They're not for sitting on the shelf collecting dust. They are for us to read and to follow and to apply in our lives. So, you know, you can read Charitamrita. And in Charitamrita, you will see how of all the different Vaishnava Charyas, when Mahaprabhu was having And there was a young Vaishnava there who had come to Jagannath Puri. And Rupa Goswami heard Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who was singing a poetic verse. Arahara. Saevahi Varas. That verse was a verse about uh, a mundane relationship and her lover when she was very young and she is remembering that oh that time on the bank In this poem, Mahaprabhu again and again. The others could not understand what was he referring to. Utilizing an apparently mundane poetry in front of Lord Jagannath. You see? What was the internal mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? No one could understand this. No one could understand. Oh, well, there was one. Swarup Damodar Goswami. He could understand everything, all the modes of Mahaprabhu. But this new person who had come, Rupa Goswami, uh, he heard that poem Mahaprabhu was reciting. And then Rupa Goswami was staying at a place in Jagannath Puri, which is now known as Siddha Bakul, where Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur also resided there. And when Rupa and Sanatan Goswamis would come to Puri, they also resided there. That place was arranged by the, by the desire of Chaitanya. And after writing that verse, he took the verse on a palm and he put it in the thatched roof just for keeping it. And he went to the ocean to bathe. At that time, while he was gone to the ocean, then Mahaprabhu came there because he would actually come to see Rupa Goswami was also there at the time. He also came to see him. He noticed when he came to the little hut that Rupa Goswami was staying in, he, his eyes caught this palm leaf that was stuck into the thatched roof. And he took it and he pulled it out. He began to read it. He began to read uh, this palm leaf. And the verse, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was overwhelmed when he was reading this verse. And at just at that time, Mahaprabhu, uh, Rupa Goswami returned there from bathing in the ocean. And then uh, Mahaprabhu looked at him and he paid his obeisances to Mahaprabhu. Then Mahaprabhu looked at him 
And he came to him, and in a mild way, he slapped his cheek. He said, How you could have known my heart? How did you know my heart? What you have written here? And what was Mahaprabhu's meditation? The verse that was written by Rupa Goswami was speaking about how Srimad Harani was meeting Krishna at Kurukshi. In the 10th canto, was described after many, many years. All the Kurukshetra with the Yadu dynasty. Come with them from Dwarka. And it was many, many years when Radha and the gopis and uh, the, all the cowherd people had met Krishna. So in that meeting, the mood that Srimati Radhika had, uh, she was remembering how Krishna and her, when they were very young, she was envisioning in her heart, oh, I met you at that time when we were so young in the beautiful forest of Vrindavan. And the atmosphere was so sweet on the banks of the Kalindi, Yamuna Devi, and the breezes were blowing, carrying the fragrance of lotus flowers, and you were playing your flute in the fifth note, and you stole my heart. I want again to go to that place. I want to bring you there. This shloka was written in beautiful poetry by Rupa And Mahaprabhu was pleased. Say that. The next hmm? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there to that residence where Haridas Thakur was, and he brought with him a number of eternal. Surup Damodar and other intimate Antaranga Bhaktas of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They came there. And in the little courtyard that they had there, now Rupa Goswami, they met Rupa Goswami. And this is the that they're meeting this person named Rupa. You see? And so Mahaprabhu, he wanted that Rupa Goswami would revealed to them what he was writing. Not only that shloka, but uh, Rupa Goswami had been instructed by Mahaprabhu to write various literatures, and he was working on two compositions of a drama of Krishna's pastimes in Braj, very beautiful drama and lila, hmm? of all of Krishna's beautiful sweet pastimes with Srimati Radhika and the gopis, and it was a it was a drama in one part. Uh, so, but when he was coming from, uh, where was it? Prayag. He was coming. Yeah? And then along the way he stopped in one village when he was journeying to Jagannath Puri. And in that village was named Satyabhamapur. Satyabhamapur. Who is Satyabhama? Yes, one of Krishna's 16,100, but she is in the top two. Who are they? Rukmini and Satyabhama. And in Dwarka Lila, Srimati Radhika had expanded herself as Satyabhama. And Chandravali had expanded herself as Rukmini Devi. So, when he was in that village, he had a dream. And Satyabhama Devi directly came to him in his dream and she said, Don't try to take Krishna out of Vrindavan. You are writing this 
drama. Because the drama was being composed regarding Krishna's, all of his pastimes, in Braj as well as in Mathura and Dwarka. Huh? But Satyabhama Devi gave him the instruction, don't try to take Krishna out of Vrindavan. In other words, the Krishna that is in Vrindavan is not the same Krishna as the Krishna in Mathura and Dwarka. So he told, uh, she told, in this way, and then Rupa Goswami woke from the dream and he understood, oh, uh, Satyabhama Devi does not want me to write all of the topics in one work. Therefore, I'm dividing it into two separate parts. And then he divided it into two different parts called Vidakta Madhava and Lalita Madhava. And he was writing this. So these great personalities who came there in Jagannath Puri to meet Rupa Goswami, Ramananda Rai, Surup Damodar and many other, they were very exalted, uh, also scholars and poets themselves. And they were very senior to Rupa Goswami. So what took place then, as he was writing these, then he began to separate. So when the whole group with Mahaprabhu came there to meet Rupa Goswami, then a conversation ensued. Conversation ensued at that time. I'm going to read some of the dialogue from that conversation. From the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. So, so <clears throat> on the next day, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again met Rupa Goswami. And with great mercy, the Lord introduced him to all the devotees. Srila Rupa Goswami offered his respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of all the devotees. And then, those devotees, by their mercy, they embraced him. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Advaita Acharya and Nityananda Prabhu, you should both shower your mercy wholeheartedly to Rupa Goswami. May Rupa Goswami, by your mercy, become be able to mellows no service. What is that? It means Krishna Rasa Bhakti, the transcendental mellows of Krishna Bhakti, Rasa. Rupa Goswami became the object of love. Now, this is during the Rathayatra time. This incident is taking place. It's in the Antyalila, chapter 1. Uh, it's just titled, Rupa Goswami's Second Meeting with the Lord. Where was his first meeting? In Prayag, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu empowered him and spoke to him for 10 days in Prayag. So... <clears throat> Thus, Rupa Goswami became the object of love and, the, and affection for all the devotees those who came from Bengal and those who resided in Orissa. Every day, 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go to see Rupa Goswami. And whatever prasadam that he received from the temple, Jagannath prasadam, he would deliver to Rupa Goswami and to Haridas Thakur. <clears throat> he would talk for some time with both of them, and then he would leave to perform his noontime duties. Now in this way, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's dealings with them continued every day. And thus receiving the transcendental favor of the Lord, Srila Rupa Goswami felt unlimited pleasure. And after Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, taking all his devotees with him, performed the Gundicha Marjan, which we're going to do on Sunday, washing and cleansing the Gundicha temple. Hmm? So after that, he went to the garden known as Aitota, and he accepted prasadam at a picnic within the garden. And when Haridas Thakur and Rupa Goswami saw that all the devotees were accepting prasadam and chanting the holy name of Hari, they both were greatly pleased. When they received the remnants of Sri Chaitanya Govinda, servant, then they respected it, and then they both began to dance in ecstasy. On the next day, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to see Srila Rupa Goswami, the omniscient Lord spoke as follows. What did Mahaprabhu tell him? Do not try to take Krishna out of Vrindavan, for he does not go anywhere else at any time. So Mahaprabhu was repeating the same thing that Satyabhama Devi told to Rupa Goswami in the dream. And then he quoted which is from the Lagu Bhagavatamrita. And this verse says, Krishna nyo yadu sambhuto yakpurna sostya atapara vrindavanam prityajya sakvachin naivagachati. This means, the Krishna who is known as Yadu Kumar, that Krishna who is known as Yadu Kumar is Vasudev Krishna. He is different from the Krishna who is the son of Nanda Maharaj. Yadu Kumar Krishna manifests his pastimes in the cities of Mathura and Dwarka. The son of Nanda Maharaj never at any time leaves Vrindavan. So Mahaprabhu quoted that verse. And then after saying this, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to perform his noontime duties, leaving Srila Rupa Goswami somewhat surprised. And then Rupa Goswami thought to himself, Satyabhama ordered me to write two different dramas. Uh, now I understand that this order has been confirmed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Formerly, I wrote the two dramas as one composition, now I shall divide it and describe the incidents in two separate works. I shall write two separate invocations of good fortune and two different introductions. So let me think deeply about the matter and then describe two different sets of pastimes. Now, <clears throat> during the Rathayatra ceremony, Rupa Goswami saw Lord Jagannath. He also saw Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing and chanting in front of the Rath cart. And when Rupa Goswami heard a verse uttered by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu during the ceremony, he immediately composed another verse dealing with the same subject. And then Krishadas Kavaraj is saying that, I have already described all these incidents, but I still wish to add briefly something more. Now this incident that I have told you about, how Rupa Goswami wrote that particular verse and revealed what Mahaprabhu was actually feeling in his heart. So, Krishnadas Kabaraj actually described this in the introduction to the Madhya Lila. Now, we're in the Antya Lila here. This is the third part, toward the end of Mahaprabhu's pastimes. But in the very beginning of the Madhya Lila, then Krishnadas Kabiraj he gave a summary of all the pastimes of Mahaprabhu. He gave a summary at the very beginning. Why? Why did he give a summary? To wet our palate. No. No. 
because he was very old, very elderly. He did not know if he would live long enough to actually write. Because the Majalila is very long, and the Anchalila also. So at the very beginning, he decided, I will give a summary study of all these pastimes, and then I, I will describe in detail. Okay? So one of the things that he decided to describe in that very first first and second chapter of Madhya was this incident of Rupa Goswami writing this verse. Understand? Understand this point? Hmm? So, therefore he's telling us that I'm not going to describe that in detail. I've already described it, but still I want to add briefly something more. <clears throat> now generally... Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recited a verse while dancing and chanting before the rat. But no one knew why he was reciting that particular verse. Only Swarup Damodar Goswami knew the purpose for which the Lord recited that verse. According to the Lord's attitude, he used to quote other verses. Swarup Damodar would detect the moods in Mahaprabhu, and then Srub Damodar would sing and, re and recite different shlokas uh, to enable the Lord to relish rasa. You see? Now, Rupa Goswami, however, he could understand the intention of the Lord. He could understand it. And thus he composed another verse that appealed to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And here is the verse. Here is the verse that Rupa Goswami composed. Yakomara hara sa eva hivaras ta eva chaitra kshapas te chom militamalati surabhaya prodhakadam banila sa chaivas mitatapi tatra surata vyapara lila vidho reva rodasi vetasi tarutale chetap samutkantate Here's the translation. That very personality who stole my heart during my youth, he is now again my master. So who's speaking this? Radharani. Who is seeing Krishna at, Dwarka, uh, at Kurukshetra. And she's thinking of Krishna when she met him in her youth in Vrindavan. So he, now... She's not in Vrindavan. She's where? In this ba battlefield of Kurukshetra. This is before the Kurukshetra battle. Huh? But that was a place of pilgrimage. And because there was going to be a solar eclipse, so all the Yadu dynasty came there, and all the Brijbasis who are part of the Yadu dynasty, they also came there. They're all related. Hmm? And that's where the gopis and Srimati Radhika and Madhya Yashoda and Nandamara that's where they saw Krishna again. But the moods of Srimati Radhika, when she saw Krishna there, and that's elaborately explained in the Madhya Lila and also in the Antya Lila, the Srimati Radhika was not satisfied. And she's expressing that here. So she's saying here that, yeah, no, this is actually the verse that Mahaprabhu recited, sorry. This is the verse that Mahaprabhu recited, which was indicating how Srimati Radhika was feeling. Because why? Because Radhika, her moods, her bhavs, have been completely uh, taken by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is not feeling that he is Krishna. Hmm? Although he's Krishna, but now he's completely covered by the bhavs and the golden color of Srimati Radhika. Bhav and Kanti. Kanti means her golden color. So this is the verse that Mahaprabhu again and again, when he's seeing Jagannath on the Rathiyatra, he's reciting this verse, Yakkomara hara sa eva hivaras. So, so he's speaking from a mundane poetry, hmm? And there's a lady who is expressing that that very same personality who stole my heart during my youth is now again my master. Oh, these are the same moonlit nights of the month of Chaitra. 
The same fragrance of malati flowers is there, and the same sweet breezes are blowing from the Kadamba forest. In our intimate relationship, I am also the same lover, yet still my mind is not happy here. I am eager to go back to that place on the bank of the Reva, under the Vetasi tree, that is my desire. So, then Rupa Goswami wrote the following verse, based upon the mood and sentiment that Mahaprabhu is expressing, which was a mundane relationship between a young girl and a young boy when they were young, like that, and how her heart was stolen. Now later she's grown up, she's married, and like this, but she's remembering that. So, Srila Rupa Goswami, and nobody could understand, only Srila Damodar could understand when Mahaprabhu was reciting this. But then Rupa Goswami, he penetrated and understood the meaning of it, and he wrote the following verse. Priyaso yam Krishna sahachari kurukshetra militas tataham saradha tad idam ubayo sangama sukam now here's what Srimati Radhika is saying as written by Rupa Goswami. My dear friend, now I have met my very old and dear friend Krishna on this field of Kurukshetra. I am the same Radharani, and now we are meeting together. It is very pleasant, but I would still like to go to the bank of the Yamuna beneath the trees of the forest there. I wish to hear the vibration of his sweet flute playing the fifth note within that forest of Vrindavan. Now after writing this verse on a palm leaf, Rupa Goswami put it somewhere in his thatched roof. He went to bathe in the sea. At that time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went there to meet him. And when he saw the leaf pushed into the roof and he saw the verse, he began to read it. And after reading the verse, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was overwhelmed by ecstatic love. At that very time, Rupa Goswami returned, having finished bathing in the sea. And seeing the Lord, Sri Rupa Goswami fell flat in the courtyard to offer obeisances. The Lord slapped him mildly in love, and he spoke as follows. He said to Rupa Goswami, My heart is very confidential. How did you know my mind in this way? And then after saying this, he firmly embraced Rupa Goswami. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took that verse and he showed it to Swarup Damodar for him to examine. And then the Lord questioned him. <laughs> then Mahaprabhu asked Swarup Damodar, how could Rupa Goswami have understood my heart? Huh? And then Swarup Damodar replied, I can understand that you have already bestowed your causeless mercy upon him. No one could otherwise understand this meaning. I can therefore guess that previously you bestowed upon him your causeless mercy. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, Rupa Goswami met me at Prayag. And knowing him to be a suitable person, I naturally bestowed my mercy upon him. Jai Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandhari Pagidit Hari Shri Shri Radha Govinda GOP Jai Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Subhashan Shri Jai So Mahaprabhu is saying, huh? Rupa Goswami met me at Prayag. And knowing him to be a suitable person, I naturally bestowed my mercy upon him. I thereupon also bestowed upon him my transcendental potency. 
So what he's saying here in Bengali is Tabe Shakti Sanchari Ami Kailun Upadesh. Huh? I gave him Upadesh, my instructions there in Prayag, but I also empowered him with my transcendental potency, my Shakti Sanchari, means to infuse potency into his heart. In particular, I instructed him in Rasa Tattva. So, uh, I bestowed Now, all of you, all of you and in particular, him in transcendental melody. As soon as I saw the unique composition of this verse, I could immediately understand the special mercy. Because by seeing a result, the cause of that result. So Surah Damodar is saying, I could understand that this verse is the result of your mercy. Uh -huh. And then Shrub Damodar said, he quoted a verse which is from, um, let's see, oh, <laughs> anyway. So, anyway, he quoted this very beautiful Sanskrit verse, uh, Swarup Damodar Goswami. He quoted this verse. Svarva paga hema mrina lini ninam nana mrina lagra bujo bajamaha anan rupam tanurupa ridhim karyam midanad di gunan adite. This means the river Ganges flowing in the planets is full of golden lotus flowers, and we, the residents of those planets, the flowers, and thus we are very beautiful, more so than this is due to the laws of law of cause and effect. Of goodness, the mode of goodness increases the beauty of his body. So why is Srub Damodar Goswami quoting such a verse where the residents of the heavenly planets are talking about how by eating these beautiful golden lotus flower stems there, that their own bodies have become so beautiful. Why is Surup Damodar mentioning this? Because he just explained that I can understand the result of something, that the cause of something, by seeing the result. And the very fact that I saw that Rupa Goswami has been able to compose this poetry, it means that you have given your causeless mercy to him, and as a result, he's been able to compose this poetry. And then he said, by seeing the result of something, you can understand the cause. So then he quoted this verse, that the residents of the heavenly planets, they are uh, eating these incredibly beautiful golden lotus flower stems in the heavenly planets. They're saying that. And they're saying, that's why we're more beautiful than any other places. So what's the cause of their beauty? Eating the lotus flower stems. <laughs> you follow? Now, after the, after the four months of the Chaturmasya, uh, you know, because all the devotees from Bengal, they would come every year. They would from Bengal, take about one month to come all the way to Puri. And they would travel in their groups, and then that's a whole beautiful histories and stories and pastimes. But then at the end of the four, they would stay four months in Puri with Mahaprabhu, all of his Navadvip Vasi, you know, Goranga Bhaktas. And then after the four months, they, they, they would return to Bengal to their homes. But Srila Rupa Goswami remained in Jagannath Puri under the shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Swami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu suddenly appeared. And as soon as Haridas Thakur 
And Rupa Goswami saw the Lord, and then they fell down to offer him the <clears throat> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced them both, and then he sat down. And the Lord inquired, Oh, what are you doing? He held up a palm leaf, it was a page of the uh, of that and when he saw Goswami, his mind was very pleased. Thus be praised the writing by saying the handwriting of Rupa Goswami is just like rows of and while reading the manuscript Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw a verse on that page and as soon as he read it he was over huh? Rupa Goswami wrote this verse now was recited and Mahaprabhu didn't come there alone you'll you'll hear that he came with the and so when he read this verse I'll first of all read the translation so you can understand what the verse is about Rupa Goswami is writing I do not know how much next When the holy name of Krishna is chanted, it appears to dance within my mouth. Of the mind, and therefore all the senses become inert. I do not know how much nectar the two syllables Krishna have produced. So Prabhupada is saying that this verse is included in the Vikanda Madhava a seven-act play written by Rupa Goswami describing Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. Here's the verse. Tunde tandavani ratam vitanute tundavali labdaye karna krodakadambani gatayate karnar bude bhyas priham chetak prangana sangani vijayate sarvendriyanam kritim no jane janita kiyadbir amritai krishneti varna dvai. So when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chanted this verse, Haridas Thakur, upon hearing the vibration, he became jubilant and he began to dance while praising its meaning. Why? Because Haridas Thakur is Nam Acharya. He's absorbed in Haridam, and when he heard this glorification, of the two syllables of the name Krishna, he became so overwhelmed and ecstatic, he began dancing. So then, uh, it's told here, he, uh, Haridas Thakur began to praise the meaning. He says, one has to learn about the beauty and the transcendental position of the holy name of the Lord by hearing the revealed scriptures from the mouths of devotees. Nowhere else can we hear of the sweetness of the Lord's holy name. So thus, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced Haridas and Rupa Goswami, and he left for the seaside to perform his noontime duties. And on the next day, after visiting the temple of Jagannath as usual, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and Ramananda Roy and Sur On the way, the Lord greatly praised his what this is the history of Rupa Goswami Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jaipuri met him in on the bank of the Ganga there, Ganga Yamuna in Prayag, where they conflu confluence together. And then later he came to Jagannath Puri. And Gurudev, whenever the young Rupa Goswami, right? So, the time that all these Vaishnavas are meeting Rupa Goswami, and it's also the first time that they're hearing about to compose the transcendental 
Russ of filled incredible poetry. Now, we don't know Sanskrit language, but those who do, they understand the incredible ability of a poet. Just like if you hear, if we hear a poet in English language, right? Who's like quite a good poet? And there are all different types of poetry and so forth as well, you know? But you can understand, we can understand. But, wow, that's amazing poetry. How they've composed. So in Sanskrit, it's a thousand times more amazing in the Sanskrit language. Once you become a little bit familiar with the Sanskrit language, its composition, its meaning, and all the subtleties, and all the alankars, that means all the decorative um, instruments that can be used to compose this poetry. Rupa Goswami is now, his poetry is being going to be recited to these top-level personalities who are incredibly great poets and scholars. Who's that? Sarvabhambhadacharya. Sarvabhambhadacharya is actually the incarnation of Brihaspati from the heavenly planets. And he posed as if he was a Mayavadi. But he was practically the greatest scholar of Vedanta Sutra in all of India. Before Mahaprabhu came, uh, after taking sannyas and he came to Puri, he met Sarvabhambhadacharya, because Sarvabhambhadacharya was the head, head uh, priest hmm, of the king of Puri. And so Sarvabhambhadacharya was well known, he's famous all throughout all of India, as being the greatest scholar of teaching the Vedanta Sutra, particularly the Sharirak Bhashya of uh, Shankaracharya, which was Mayavad. And then there was the whole uh, incident when Mahaprabhu arrived in Puri and met Sarvabhambhadacharya, fainted in front of Jagannath, Sarvabhambhadacharya brought him to his house, and he met him and Nityananda and the other devotees who were traveling with Mahaprabhu. And then he sat for seven days listening to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Seven days. Uh, sorry. Really Mahaprabhu know. was listening to Sarvabhambhadacharya for seven days. And then at the end of seven days, Sarvabhama said, well, I don't know if you've understood what I've been telling you. Because <clears throat> you've been just simply listening, listening, but I, I'm not getting any response at all from you. Whether or not you are understanding it, I'm not certain. <laughs> so then Mahaprabhu told him. And Mahaprabhu was very young, only 24 years old. So beautiful, strikingly beautiful. Uh, and he was also a relative. There was a village relationship between uh, Lord Chaitanya's maternal grandfather uh, and Sarvabhambhadacharya, because Sarvabhambhadacharya was also born in Navadweep. But he left the Navadweep to come to Puri as a pastime. And he posed as if he was a Mayavadi. This is the pastime of the Lord. And then when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, he felt so much affection for him. He says, you are very young sannyasi and so beautiful. It would be very difficult for you to keep your sannyas vows. I will teach you Vedanta. This very powerful. That I would be very pleased to hear from you. You're such a great, elevated personality and scholar. So then after seven days, he said, I don't know. You haven't meant it, mentioned anything. Whether you're understanding. And then... Uh, and then uh, Mahaprabhu told him, actually, I've understood everything that you said. And I also understand all the uh, aphorisms, all the verses very well. I understand this. But your explanation, it is like, like this, the clouds coming and covering over the sun. <laughs> the sun by itself, does not need any other illumination. But your, your interpretation of these verses is like covering the sun by clouds. And Sarvabhama, what? You understand? Vedanta, you tell me then what you understand. And then Mahaprabhu began to speak. And Sarvabhama, and there were others there also in that assembly. And Sarvabhoma was completely astonished. And then Sarvabhoma realized he is the Supreme Personality of God in himself. 
He surrendered at his lotus feet. Mahaprabhu revealed to him. Only he could see the six-armed sadhguj form you know, of two arms of Krishna, two arms of Lord Ram, and two arms of Mahaprabhu as a sannyasi. You know? And then after that, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya sat up and he immediately, spontaneously, in Sanskrit, he composed 100 verses glorifying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on the spot. That's how great scholar he was. Poet, Poet scholar, everything. Huh? And those 100 verses are known as Sarvabhama Shataka, the 100 verses of Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. So that kind of personality was being brought to visit with young Rupa Goswami, Haridas Thakur, in their place. Then Mahaprabhu is bringing Swarup Damodar. Swarup Damodar Goswami is the disciple succession is under Swarup Rupa. He's an incarnation of Lalita Devi in Mahaprabhu's Leela. Only he and Ramananda Roy who also Mahaprabhu is bringing to this assembly. They're the topmost level scholars, Vaishnavas, Rasik Vaishnavas. They've come into the courtyard of Rupa Goswami. So, when, when Mahaprabhu recited the two important verses, he felt very great pleasure. And thus, as if he had five mouths, he began to praise his devotee. And just to examine <clears throat> Sarvabhama Tacharya and Ramananda Roy, the Lord began to praise the transcendental qualities of Sri Rupa Goswami in front of them. Now, characteristically, the Supreme Personality of God does not take seriously an offense that is committed by a pure devotee. The Lord accepts whatever small service a devotee renders as being such a great service that he is prepared to give even himself what to speak of other benedictions. This is what Mahaprabhu is telling. And then he says, then Mahaprabhu said, the Supreme Personality of God, he quoted a verse from Bhagavatam, the Supreme Personality of God, who is known as Purushottam, the greatest of all persons, he has a pure mind. He is so gentle that even if his servant is implicated in a great offense, he does not take it very seriously. Indeed, if his servant renders some small service, the Lord accepts it as being very great. And even if an envious person blasphemes the Lord, the Lord never manifests anger against him. Such are his great qualities. Now, when Haridas Thakur and Rupa Goswami saw that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had come with his intimate devotees, they both immediately fell down like logs and they offered prayers to the lotus feet. Thus, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his personal devotees, the Lord then sat down in an elevated place with his devotees. And Rupa Goswami and Haridas Thakur sat at the foot of the elevated place where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was sitting. Everyone asked them to the same level as the Lord and his associates. They did not do so. And when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Rupa Goswami verse that they had previously heard but instead he remained silent because you can imagine he's sitting in front of these elevated personalities and he's a little hesitant, a little bit shy to read his own poetry huh? then instead of Rupa reciting it Sarup Damodar Goswami recited the verse and when all the devotees heard it their minds were struck with wonder and then after hearing this verse, Ramananda Roy and Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, they said to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, without your special mercy, how could this Rupa Goswami have understood your mind? Srila Ramananda Roy said that previously Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had empowered his heart so that he could express elevated and conclusive statements to which even Lord Brahma had no access. So Ramananda Roy's saying, yes, I also had this experience, that Mahaprabhu empowered me to speak all these things. And then he said, had you not previously bestowed your mercy on him, all of them said this to Mahaprabhu, it would not have been possible for him to express 
your internal feelings. And then Shaitanya Mahaprabhu said, My dear Rupa, please recite that verse from your drama, which upon being heard makes all people's unhappiness and lamentation go away. And when the Lord persisted in asking this again and again, then Rupa Goswami and what is that verse? The one we just read about I don't know how much nectar is in the two syllables of Krishna. So then Rupa Goswami recited that. And when all the devotees of Sri Chaitanya, especially Sri Ramananda wrote, they were all in a bliss and struck with wonder. Everyone admitted that although they had heard many statements glorifying the holy name of the Lord, they had never heard such sweet descriptions as those of Rupa Goswami. Then Ramananda Roy inquired, what kind of drama are you writing? We can understand that it is the mind of conclusive statements. Swarup Damodar replied for Srila Rupa Goswami on his behalf. Swarup Damodar said, he wanted to compose a drama about the pastimes of Lord Krishna. He planned to describe in one book both the pastimes of Vrindavan and those of Dwarka and Mathura. And he began it in that way, but now... Following the order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he has divided it in two, and he is writing two plays, one concerning the pastimes of Mathura and Dwarka, and the other concerning the pastimes of Vrindavan. The two plays are called the Dagda Madhava and the Lita Madhava. Both of them describe ecstatic emotional love of God. And then Ramananda Roy said, Oh, Rupa, please recite the introductory verse of the Vedagda Madhava so that I can hear and examine it. And thus, Rupa Goswami, being ordered by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, recited the verse. So we've run out of time. This goes on, and I'm going to continue after this weekend, because starting tomorrow, we're going to be uh, discussing Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, because it is his disappearance day, and also Sri Gadadhar Pandit, the incarnation of Srimati Radhika, both disappeared on this day, which is two days before the Ratha Yatra. So tomorrow we will be discussing that in the morning time at 11 o'clock in the morning, and then at noon time at 1 o'clock there will be the Artik and also a feast being prepared tomorrow by the devotees. Then uh, we won't have the evening class tomorrow. We'll have that midday class. And then the next day on Sunday is the the very day in Jagannath Puri where Mahaprabhu every day before the Ratha Yatra, on the day before, he would go with all of his bhaktas and they would do what? Gundicha Marjan means cleansing the Gundicha temple for Lord Jagannath. And that pastime is just completely amazing. So what the devotees have decided to do is that they're actually... Uh, in the morning, the late morning, they're going to all, all unitedly, they're going to do a huge cleanup, Maha cleanup. I don't know where and what and all of that, but they they want to do that in memory of the Gundi Chamarjan. And then there will be the noon Arctic and the feast. There will also be a feast on that day. And then the evening, we're going to discuss that pastime in detail from Chaitanya Charitamrita. So then the following day, that's on Sunday, and then the following day on Monday, is the Ratha Yatra festival day in Jagannath Puri. So that Ratha Yatra festival day, this year is the first time in 200 years that Lord Jagannath is not coming out from the temple and sitting on his rath and having his 10-day festival, which is a complete shame. But at any, way, any rate, everything goes on under his supreme will. So we're going to, we're going to discuss in the morning class on that day, on Monday, from 11 till 1, then we're going to discuss the Ratha Yatra Kata. So three, and, and then there's also a feast on that day, after that. So three days of ecstatic Ratha Yatra Kata and festivities, and so don't miss it. Hello. <laughs> I want to have a question. Yeah. Is this um, Sarvabhama uh, Shataka? Yes. Book in, in it's English? translated into English, yes. Actually, our Bhaktivedanta Bhagwat Maharaj, that means the skinny one, we have a big one and a skinny one, <laughs> right, yeah. from Canada. He's a Sanskrit scholar. He translated that. And then some other person took the manuscript and printed it in book form. Oh. So it is available. 
It might be even available in the folio of Prabhupada. I'll have Is a look. Is it possible you find it? Maybe I can yeah, I can a look. copy and we can... No, no, you don't have to purchase anything. It's just, oh, it's, it's probably on the folio. I'll look, I'll look later. So Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu ki jai, Sri Guru Goswami Pada ki jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, Nitai, Gaur Premanandi. Hari Hari Bo. Is there any way that you can stay? That would be nice. <laughs> you can think about it. Jai, Jai.